Hi everyone, welcome to One Finance. And in this video, we're going to talk about cost averaging strategy. And when we talk about cost averaging strategy, we have to look at returns and the time frame of our investments. Now, let's say for a money market uh, fund or investment, if you're going to look at the one to five year you know time frame it's going to be like this it's very straight up trend why because money market funds are very conservative and their returns are very consistent you know all throughout the five year time frame and if you're going to look at bonds it's going to be like this so there are you know obvious curves uh, within the five year time frame but if you're going to look at where you started from the first year and to the fifth year, you know, the fifth year value is uh, obviously higher than uh, your initial year's uh, price. And here's the performance of a stock investment for, let's say, a five year time frame. So the volatility is very obvious. You have, you know, multiple tips, multiple, you know, uh, picks uptrend, downtrend, all throughout the five-year time frame. So what is cost averaging? It is actually a strategy of buying multiple investments, let's say in units or shares in different intervals to reduce potential losses and thereby improving the portfolio gains. So it can be done if you have, you know, equities, now UITF or mutual funds. So to better understand, let's try to have a simulated investment, but this time let's try to zoom into, you know, one year time frame instead of using a long, longer time frame, which is five years. So this time, pagtingnan mo yung trend ng money market in one year is gonna be like this. Now let's say on the you know, first day of your investment, you bought, let's say 10 shares and price at 100. And on, uh, let's say, the after one year, okay, the price now is actually one, 104. Now, the, the first case here, if you don't uh, apply cost averaging, so initial cost, you have 100, and the number of shares you bought, then average cost, that's 100, because one time ka lang bumili ng shares. And then uh, price after one year, that's 104. So from here to this point, it's now priced at 104. So gains per share after a year, that's going to be 4 pesos per share. And your gains percentage is actually 4%. Now, why is that we don't recommend cost averaging in money market funds? Because it can, you know, drag the performance of your portfolio, of your investment. Now, let's try to be specific here. Let's say you did apply cost averaging and within a one year time frame, you actually bought 20 shares, but you know, in, in different time intervals. For example, on the first you know, tranche of your 10 shares, you bought it at 100. On the second tranche, that's actually 102. Now, if you're going to look at the average here, since you actually bought, you know, additional 10 shares, but this time, you know, more expensive than your initial, which is 100. Now you're buying at 102. If you're going to look at the average costs, that's 101. Okay. There's an increase in average cost compared to not, you know, buying at all at 102. So this time, since you bought 20 shares in different time intervals, your cost averaging went up to 101. Okay, so still you have after a year, the price is 104. Now try to look at the gains here. Instead of having four, okay, this time now you have three. And that's a, a gains percentage of around 3%. So there's a disadvantage if you apply cost averaging in money market simply because the, the performance of these investments are steadily uptrend. Therefore, if you buy along the way, you keep on buying more and more expensive shares. 
How about bond funds? It's going to be the same. We don't recommend usually, you know, cost averaging in intermediate bond funds. Now, because of their performance again, which are, you know, very steady all throughout, let's say this time, a one-year time frame. So initial costs stay at 100. You bought 10 shares and then average costs, of course, because you don't have any, you know, uh, transactions within a one year time frame, your average cost is 100. Now, what if the price after a year went up to 108? Your gains after a year, that's going to be eight pesos per share. Gains percentage, 8%. Now, what if you did apply cost averaging? Now, this time you actually bought, you know, 20 shares. So first 10 shares you bought at 100, second 10 shares, second batch of your, you know, 10 shares you bought at 104. So basically this one is higher than your initial cost. So if we're going to look at again here, your average costs went up to 102 from 100. Okay. So therefore, if you look at the gains after a year, that's 108 minus 102, you have now gains of six pesos per share or equivalent of six pesos or, or 6%. So if you're going to do that without cost averaging and with cost averaging, there's a, you know, a drag in your returns from 8% to 6%. Again, this is the same case in money market funds. Why is that? Again, because, you know, these investments are debt instruments and they tend to, you know, drive uptrend all throughout the one year time frame. Now let's try to look at equities where we highly recommend cost averaging. Now, if you're going to zoom in to the performance of stock funds or equity funds in a one year time frame, or even direct common stocks, it's gonna be like this. You can see, you know, uh, very often downtrend and then uh, uptrend again, dips, several dips and several peaks of your uh, investment. So what we're going to do is that we wanted to exploit this, you know, downtrend. And let's say we don't have cost, uh, we, we, we did not apply cost averaging. So initial cost 100, uh, we bought still 10 shares, average cost, it's gonna be 100 per share. And uh, price after a year, that's gonna be 115. So in short, uh, 100, and then it went up to 115. You actually got after a year, that's 15 uh, pesos gains per share or equivalent to 15%. Now, what if, you know, you, you did apply cost averaging and bought 30 shares? So let's say this is your first tranche of 10 shares at 100. And then the second time we have at 95 pesos per share. And on the third tranche, you have now 98 pesos per share. Now, since you have multiple prices, you know, in different time intervals, it, it actually computes for the average price of your 30 shares. Okay, so if you're going to look at here, from 100 without cost averaging, now it's priced at 97.65. Why is that? Because you actually bought, you know, additional shares lower than your initial cost of 100 so this time it's 95 and again on the third tranche you actually bought again lower than your initial price so this time at 98 so that's going to be 100 uh, 95 and 98 and you compute for the weight of each 10 shares in respect to those prices you would get the cost averaging of 97.65 that's weighted cost average so price after a year, 115. Now, if you're going to look at here, the gains coming from 15, you now have 17.35%. Okay, so that's exactly the main reason why we recommend cost averaging in stocks or equities, because it tries to exploit these opportunities to give you better returns from 15, now at 17.35%. So that's all in this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, see you again in my next video.